we're going to be talking about 10 plants that you should never, ever touch. Number one is quite literally deadly, and its name clearly says so. Stay tuned to find out what it is, and with all that said and done, let's begin, shall we? Number 10. The Burning Bush. No, this isn't the same plant described in the Bible. Or maybe it is. God, can you hear me? Anyway, one thing's for sure, like its biblical counterpart, this plant, as its name suggests, can literally burst into flames. The name Burning Bush derives from the volatile oils produced by the plant, which can catch fire readily in hot weather. The daughter of Swedish botanist Carl Linnaeus is said to have ignited the air above these plants once, at the end of a particularly hot, windless summer day, using a simple matchstick. Aside from being a fire hazard, there is another reason why you should think twice about keeping these guys in your garden. All parts of this plant are highly toxic. Brushing your skin against its foliage will not have an immediate effect, though, as reactions typically begin 24 hours after the fact. Initially, the skin turns red and starts to itch and burn. Large blisters then form within 48 hours. The blisters may leave black, brown, or purplish scars that can last for several years. And yes, I mean it when I say years. Number 9. The Destroying Angel Looking dainty and all white, it would be easy to think that this is just one harmless mushroom. But those who have eaten the Destroying Angel will tell you that it's far from that. Those who have survived, at least. Destroying Angels are characterized by having a white stalk and gills. The cap can be pure white or white at the edge and yellowish, pinkish, or tan at the center. They can easily be mistaken for edible fungi, such as the button mushroom, the meadow mushroom, or even the horse mushroom. Many people have had that fatal mistake. Destroying Angels contain a complex group of poisonous substances called amatoxins. These toxins can cause gastrointestinal disorders with symptoms such as diarrhea, nausea, and stomach pains occurring within 5 to 12 hours. Cruelly, the symptoms usually fade away for several hours or even a day or two, tricking the victim into thinking that they're recovering. When in due course, the symptoms return with a vengeance and it may well be too late. Kidney and liver damage is already underway. and Without treatment, coma and eventual death are almost inevitable. Number 8. The Death Cap The Death Cap Mushroom Amanita phallides is a deadly fungus commonly mistaken for edible mushrooms. The caps of the mushrooms are 40 to 160 millimeters wide and they're usually pale green to yellow in color, with distinctive white gills and a white stem. It has a membrane skirt on the upper part of the stem and a cup-like structure around the base of the stem. The death cap is native to Europe, where it is widespread. It is found from the southern coastal regions of Scandinavia in the north to Ireland in the west, east to Poland and western Russia, and south throughout the Balkans in Greece, Italy, Spain, and Portugal in the Mediterranean basin, and in Morocco and Algeria in North Africa. In West Asia, it's been reported from forests of northern Iran. Ingesting one singular death cap mushroom is enough to kill a healthy adult. All parts of the mushroom are poisonous. Cooking or peeling does not make the mushroom safe to eat either. Number 7. The Conosci Phalaris. More commonly known as Conosci Phalaris volatina rugosa is an extremely common lawn mushroom which is widely distributed and especially common in the Pacific Northwest. It also grows on wood chips, rich soil, and compost. It's been found in Europe, Asia, and North America. Featuring the same mycotoxins as the death cap mushroom, C. phalaris is potentially fatal if eaten. The onset of gastrointestinal symptoms often occurs 6 to 24 hours after the mushrooms were consumed, frequently leading to an initial misdiagnosis of food poisoning or the stomach flu. The patient may appear to recover only to suffer from a life-threatening reappearance of the gastrointestinal distress, coupled with liver and kidney failure. Along with the death cap, C. phalaris is certainly one mushroom you don't want to be in your steak sauce. Number 6. The Porcupine Tomato Also called the Devil's Thorn, the Porcupine Tomato is actually a member of the tomato family, and this plant bears quite a lot of resemblances from your garden variety tomato plant, aside from the thorns, of course. Originally a Madagascar native, it was introduced to the U.S. but has not shown itself to be invasive, which is a good thing as you'll find out in a bit. This plant is very slow at reproducing and its seeds don't get distributed as much because birds actually avoid eating its berries. Now what could be the reason why that is, I wonder? 
Well, you see, the porcupine tomato produces a class of chemicals called tropane alkaloids, which, depending on the chemical composition of these alkaloids, can prove deadly if consumed. Extreme care should be exerted should you choose to grow this plant as an ornamental species, and people actually do grow them because of its beautiful lavender flowers. If you do happen to prick yourself with a thorn and the thorn breaks in your skin, a flux of these tropane alkaloids will be released directly into your bloodstream and it can make you seriously ill. It certainly won't kill you with that small amount, but flu-like symptoms are almost guaranteed. Since the fruits look so much like tomatoes, it's strongly suggested that this plant never, under any circumstances, be exposed to small children, as that could have disastrous consequences. A child eating one small fruit will almost certainly be fatal. Number 5. The Giant Hogweed Giant hogweed is a noxious weed that is part of the carrot family. It originated from the Caucasus Mountains between the Black and Caspian Seas by Russia, but it made its way over to the US by the early 20th century. It can grow up to 14 feet tall with thick leaves stretching 5 feet wide and large clusters of white flowers gracing the top of the plant in an umbrella pattern. Giant hogweed sap contains toxic chemicals known as photosensitizing furin comorans. When these chemicals come into contact with the human skin, it can cause a skin reaction that's extremely sensitive to light. The light-sensitive skin reaction causes dark, painful blisters that form within 48 hours and result in scars that can last anywhere from a few months to six years. Touching giant hogweed can also cause long-term sunlight sensitivity and blindness if sap gets into a person's eye. Needless to say, if you see these plants growing in your backyard, never touch them, but rather call an expert to get rid of them. Number 4. The Death Commas Death Commas is a toxic weed that grows mostly in the western US and across the Plains states. At least 15 species are native to North America and grow in all kinds of habitats. Mainly moist mountain valleys, dry hills, forest grassland, and even coastal and marsh areas. All parts of this plant contain the poisonous alkaloid zygodenine. Needless to say, ingesting this plant can cause fatalities and it happens pretty commonly on livestock. Symptoms of poisoning are similar for all species of animals and include excessive salivation, froth around the nose and mouth, nausea, vomiting, muscular weakness, ataxia, possible coma, and death. Death among cattle and horses are usually low because the animals do not select the plant if other forages are available. However, sheep will graze the plant and losses can be significant. Of course, if these plants can down a fully grown cow, it's safe to say that it can be fatal to humans as well. So stay away from these plants and have them promptly removed if you see them in your backyard. Number 3. The Oleander I actually have some of these in my backyard. Maybe I should fix that. Native to the Far East and the Mediterranean, oleanders grow easily and rapidly in the United States, especially in southern coastal climates. This is where they're often planted along highways as a noise and pollution barrier. These evergreens thrive with little care and are very tolerant of heat and drought. Most will survive temperatures as low as 15 to 20 degrees, though their foliage may get damaged. Yet even then, the shrubs recover quickly in spring so long as their roots are not harmed. They are extremely beautiful plants, but very deadly as well. All parts of the beautiful oleander contain poison, several types of poison. Two of the most potent are oleandrin and nerine, known for their powerful effect on the heart. An oleander's poison is so strong, in fact, that it can poison a person who simply eats the honey made by bees that have digested oleander nectar. A single ingested oleander leaf can be fatal, especially to a child. Ingestion of oleander results in diarrhea, vomiting, intense stomach pain, drowsiness, dizziness, and irregular heartbeat, and of course, often death. Now it's time for the day's best pick. Today we're going to be looking at a plant that looks really, really gross. I mean, I guess it kind of looks like bubblegum with blood on it. I don't really know why anybody would think of eating it. But is it poisonous? Find out what it is and if you should even try to eat it next with number two. The Bleeding Tooth. Hmm, what an appetizing name. Scientifically known as the Hydanellum pecky, the young bleeding tooth's fungus thick red fluid oozes through its tiny pores, creating the appearance of blood. Spotted in Europe and North America's Pacific Northwest, the bleeding tooth fungus mainly resides among moss and pine needle litter in coniferous forests. The mushroom contains atramentin, a chemical with effective antibacterial and anticoagulant properties. The colorful pigments are also used to dye fabrics. This gooey red liquid is actually a sap of sorts caused by a process called gutation. 
When the soil surrounding the fungus' root system becomes very wet, it may force water into the roots through the process of osmosis. This creates pressure throughout the organism, which eventually builds up enough to force liquid to the surface of the fungus. Although scientists have not yet decided what this liquid is exactly, they know it appears red thanks to a pigment found within the fungus. Uh, yeah, it certainly looks gory, but is it poisonous? Well, fortunately, no. Despite its horrific appearance, the mushroom is pretty much safe to eat, but we're still not recommending you do so. You see, aside from looking like something you should never ever put in your mouth, its taste has been described as a very bitter pepper. Before we move on, do me a favor. My analytics show that only about 15% of you watching are actually subscribed. Come on guys, what's up with that? Can you guys please hit the subscribe button? You guys watch my videos every day anyway, so you might as well subscribe and keep up to date with every video we put out. Number 1. The Deadly Nightshade The name kinda says it all, doesn't it? Deadly Nightshade contains poisonous atropine and scopolamine in its stems, leaves, berries, and roots as well. You'll recognize it by its dull, dark green leaves and bell-shaped purple-scented flowers, which bloom from midsummer through early fall. Their berries are green when they form and turn to a shiny black as they ripen. They're sweet and juicy, which makes them tempting to children. The poisons contained in Deadly Nightshade affect the nervous system. Taken in sufficient doses, the deadly poison paralyzes nerve endings in the involuntary muscles of the body, such as the blood vessels, heart, and gastrointestinal muscles. Symptoms of deadly nightshade poisoning include dilated pupils, sensitivity to light, blurred vision, headaches, confusion, and convulsions. As few as two ingested berries can kill a child, and 10 to 20 berries would kill an adult. Even handling the plant can cause irritation. Do any of these plants grow in your neck of the woods? Let us know in the comment section down below. Want to watch more videos about amazing plant life? Well, click on any of the videos you see on your screen. As always, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Later, everybody.